punishment is over. The mission of Shay's Warriors is to inspire, inform, and empower through health, fitness, and the mind-body connection to heal survivors and their families through a national network of support. Our Talk to Us and Share community was formed as part of our online educational outreach to support each other through survivorship and survivorship. Talk to Us and Share is hosted by our board members every second and fourth Wednesday of the month um, with Shay Moraga, uh, founder of Shay's Warriors, Rosemary Flaherty, uh, retired nurse, and myself, uh, Dr. Tony Funk, specializing um, uh, in integrative cancer care. We look forward to including our special guest speakers to broaden our conversations within the cancer healing sphere. This is a form of honest conversation between our guests uh, about the many emotional, physical, and social realities that have become part of life and moving forward. And we all uh, we welcome you to all participate in the success of our group by talking, listening, and sharing. And welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Well, we are going to talk about um, cardiovascular health uh, risks as well. Uh, and um, what to look for, signs and symptoms, um, especially post-chemotherapy, uh, post post-radiation. And we're going to start uh, tonight off with Rosemary. Hello, everybody. Now, I've heard some people talking about how energy is low. So I think that maybe what we should do is just start out with something that gives us a little bit of energy. So we're going to put our hands together in front of our our sternum in front of our chest and our heart. We're going to rub our hands together and close our eyes, take a deep breath and generate all kinds of energy between our hands. And now we're going to take that energy from our hands and we're going to take it and roll it around our heads and our shoulders. Take a deep breath and feel revitalized. <laughs> Okay, so the Did reason anyone else peak? I have to ask that question. Did anyone else peak? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I had to ask. <laughs> we know who looks at the Christmas presents early too, huh? <laughs> um, now, this is February and February is American Heart Month. So that was the impetus for us to present um, how all about hearts and recognizing signs and symptoms and talking about the, the cardio side effects involved with so many chemotherapies and how to manage them and how to manage health moving forward. So um, it's always, and. Just a reminder that February 5th was Dress Red, which is part of American Heart Month. Usually there are big galas everywhere where everybody's wearing red and you're talking about um, American Heart um, research and such like that. But essentially it was one that was kind of like Dress Red was a reminder that women um, are, are um, die more of heart attacks than men do actually. So. Um, men have more cardiac disease, but women tend to have more fatalities. And the reason for that is we have some different symptoms. So Dress Red was designed to remind women that we need to be as informed and on top of things and our symptoms as well as men. So um, just a reminder about uh, the signs and symptoms of, of uh, a heart attack because it's still the number one killer. I think that COVID this year did surpass heart disease. But um, when you're having classical symptoms of a heart attack, it's chest pain and chest discomfort, and it can be in varying degrees. It can be intermittent, it can be constant. And the descriptors are a discomfort that can be crushing, burning, feel like pressure, it can be squeezing, you can feel full. It can just be plain out description of pain, but it is one that gets your attention. 
And like I said, it can come and go and people can say, ooh, that felt weird and it goes away and then it might return in a couple of hours. Um, so you need to be aware that it can come and go and it has a lot of dis descriptors to it. Then there's associated, you get radiating pain, which is associated in your arms. It can go up to your chest. You can feel discomfort in your neck. And women tend to have more symptoms of shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, GI disturbances in general, and um, more jaw pain. So those are the ones that we have. And many times women present just with shortness of breath. I don't know why I feel short of breath. Whereas men tend to have more symptoms with radiating pain and it can also go to the back. Um, but still the number one sign and symptom and the presenting symptom into emergency rooms for people, for both men and women is classic chest pain. And with men, classic chest pain might not be, it might be something other than a heart attack. But the majority of time that women present with classic chest pain, it has a much higher probability of actually being a heart attack or an MI. Um, then these are just general symptoms of, of heart attack, regardless of the etiology. Um, now, when people have had chemotherapy, there are side of cardiac side effects that can happen during treatment or after treatment. And we're going to be reviewing um, the, these um, chemotherapeutic agents and how they're managed during and after treatment. So the, the type of chemotherapies that have the most cardiac side effects are the anthracycline chemotherapies, which are include Doxyrubicin, also known as adriamycin, which is um, nicknamed the red devil. And it's very frequently used. So it's used with breast cancer, ovarian cancer, lymphomas, leukemias, and sarcomas. So it's a widely used chemotherapeutic agent. Um, epirubicin, donorubicin, it's like the girls, the rubicin girls, idorubicin, and um, are all associated chemotherapies in that family. Herceptin can also have some cardiac side effects. Um, so one thing that's really important before you start these chemotherapeutic agents is that the oncologist is going to do a cardiac assessment. And this is going to include your age. Do you have a previous cardiac history? Have you had previous treatment with any of these uh, medications, with any of these chemotherapeutic agents, or have you had radiation before? Diabetes, pre-existing cardiac um, conditions, and some basic information. Blood pressure is very important to monitor. Heart rate is very important to monitor and assess uh, because any um, high blood pressure really needs to be treated. Um, How's the cardiac function? And the other thing is labs. They wanna look at your lipid panels to see if you have high cholesterol, the good, um, the LDLs, the, the high density and the low density um, lipids. Then um, do you have a, any history of a previous heart attack of any type? So these are all assessments that create um, uh, the risk factors involved with you receiving these medications. So besides the baseline assessment, there may be um, a trip to the cardiologist. They may say, I want you to get a cardiac consult. This is not unusual. And then there may be cardiac imaging that is done prior. So besides the labs and the basic assessment, the, um, there may be um, a, a cardiac echo, which is the one that's usually performed it is an ultrasound, so it's, you don't have to have an IV or anything, but it's an ultrasound of the chest that gives you a reading of the, the function in your heart as well as a, an EKG simultaneously. And for people that might have a higher risk, there may be a, a MUGA scan, which is a um, 
nuclear scan that also evaluates your cardiac function, particularly the function of the muscles, particularly the ventricles. So um, these are um, images that, that also evaluate. Oh, am I getting a feedback? Okay, good. I just got a feedback. So the, these tests are done at the prior to starting chemo. And then if there's any symptoms that develop, they might be performed mid chemo to see if there's any changes. And then after you complete therapy, many times there is a scan that's done at some type period after your chemotherapy. Um, so those are the, the workups for it. Now, what happens if somebody starts is having chemotherapy and starts having some cardiac symptoms? Then there are a number of options for the oncologist to do. They can reduce the dose, change the chemotherapeutic agents, um, go get a cardiac a trip to the cardiologist, a cardiology appointment, um, and there can be medications that are introduced as well. So what they found is many of our common um, cardiac medications can also be protective of the heart during your chemotherapy. So the um, uh, beta blockers and something called ACE inhibitors that are usually um, deal with um, high blood pressure can also be given to people during their treatment and it can help with any cardiac um, toxicities or side effects that occur during the chemotherapy. So these are the things that you need to be really aware of when you're receiving chemotherapy or if you've had chemotherapy you know, in the past because it's important to know what chemotherapeutic agents you had. It's important to keep track of them and to relay that to all of your healthcare workers, not just your oncologist, but when you return to your primary care physician or your gynecologist, or if you're going to a cardiologist as well, it's just important information for you to have um, through your life health span with any new practitioner that's entered in. Um, because everybody needs to be aware of that. And you also need to be aware of all the signs and symptoms of any type of cardiac event. Um, so careful monitoring of your blood pressure, of your lipids. Um, you want to do good weight management, exercise, and um, healthy diets, which Dr. Fung will take over and tell us all about that. Um, and then, so there can be early interventions and modifications of care should something arise during your chemotherapy. Um, so you're gonna, people that have risk are one thing, but sometimes people develop risk uh, or develop symptoms that have no risk whatsoever. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and then, um, as far as radiation, radiation can also cause some uh, cardiac side effects, particularly with um, the vessels, and if it's very close to the heart. So the radiation that's delivered through the equipment that we have today and the specificity of the radiation is so much different than treatment was even 10 years ago because it is so exacting and the dose is so um, exact that these, you need to be aware of them, but the cardiac effects from radiation um, have been greatly reduced through the improvement of technology. Um, and then there are some other medications that can be delivered to protect the heart during um, your chemotherapy. And some people who have a high risk might get an infusion of a certain medication prior to their doses of cisplatinum specifically to be um, cardioprotective. Um, but I wanna share something about how things have changed over the years. When I was a new graduate, um, I worked in, in on many different floors and we had to give education to people as they're leaving the hospital. So if somebody had uh, uh, was a cardiac patient, 
you, these are the instructions. You can never eat fat again, as long as you live. Um, you have to get special pans so that you don't have to add oils to your foods. You, um, smoking secession was, was always part of it, but the dietary was just incredibly different than it was today. Because what we know is that oils are something that are really beneficial for us. And we were depriving people of one of the, because of all the research that was available then, and then that was the way that heart disease was managed. And also eggs, not that bad. So <laughs> I just thought that was kind of interesting. And the other thing that was interesting is how different healthcare was back then is that you would give these lectures and give resources about how to stop smoking because there was a lot of smoking. And then you walk into the nurse's lounge, you'd open the door and this cloud of smoke would come out from all the smoking nurses that were on their breaks. So things have definitely changed. <laughs> And with that, I will turn that over to Dr. Fun. Thank you so much, Rosemary. I think that was a really fabulous intro to all of the different risk factors and what you should expect um, prior to your chemo and, uh, what to, and also um, what to look out for during chemo and after. And I also wanted to add on that these effects, these cardiovascular effects, um, can, can, you know, doesn't necessarily have to show up right away. They can manifest, you know, 10 plus years down the line, especially for, um, for people who are uh, childhood cancer survivors, um, when you were talking about leukemias. Um, that is a big group that uh, really ha you have to monitor cardiovascular events uh, very closely. And of course, for um, anybody who has any of those chemos, the good thing about some of those certain chemos is it is dose dependent. So um, you do have dose dependent toxicity. So that when Rosemary said, you know, if you're having any type of, uh, of uh, cardiovascular uh, signs and symptoms, um, they reduce that dose, and that's the reason why, um, to help to prevent uh, or to, to reduce any more uh, cardiovascular injury. Um, and, and there are a lot of different ways that now that you can manage um, cardiovascular uh, risk and injury um, during your treatment and also after your treatment. Um, and many much of that is through lifestyle. So through exercise, through uh, stress management, uh, mindfulness practices, and, and then also through diet. Um, and uh, there are also other herbs and other supplements that you can uh, take to help to mitigate some of these, uh, some of these um, side effects, as well as you can even turn around uh, some of these uh, cardiotoxicity uh, symptoms. So that being said, um, Rosemary talked about uh, the modifiable risk factors. And American Heart Association has a really great um, uh, di Venn diagram that shows the intersection between breast cancer risk and cardiovascular disease and how a lot of things do overlap. Um, things such as your age, diet, family history, um, and other really uh, highly modifiable factors such as you know, alcohol intake, um, physical activity, tobacco use, uh, of course, and then maintaining a healthy uh, uh, weight. So those are a lot of um, material there for lifestyle modification. Um, that should be started immediately, even you know, prior to any type of diagnosis, um, and definitely continue throughout uh, treatment and then post-treatment. So the name of the game with any type of cardiopreventative uh, interventions is to reduce inflammation 
and damage to the heart tissues. So number one thing that is always recommended is to exercise. Exercise is, uh, your heart is a muscle and you must exercise that muscle as well. So uh, when you do exercise, you are working your muscles, you're working your heart muscles specifically, um, and you are keeping the valves open and clean as much as possible, um, keeping, uh, keeping the inside, the endothelial cells um, healthy and reducing inflammation there. So, um, there have been um, many uh, studies with yoga and mindfulness practices um, uh, utilized together um, that have uh, turned around um, patients who have uh, initially started having these uh, cardiotoxicity symptoms. So it does work and it does work well and it is a win-win. The next piece uh, that I'm talking, I'm going to talk about is uh, diet. And there, the most um, research has been done with the Mediterranean diet um, that includes the fabulous anti-inflammatory fats um, from the fatty fish and fish oil and um, high quality olive oil uh, different nuts and seed oils, uh, avocado oils. Um, and uh, the, the other piece of the Mediterranean diet is there is the foods that they recommend are all high in fiber. So lots of dark green leafy veggies, whole grains if you tolerate them, and other, uh, other fruits uh, rich in antioxidants. So as a, there is concerns about, you know, adding antioxidants in your diet through chemo, uh, but when you are eating them in your food, you're not consuming a, you know, a, a synthetic form of antioxidant that you're only getting a very high dose of you're getting a very balanced um, like mix of antioxidants and fiber and fats and proteins and uh, minerals and vitamins through your food. So that is, that's not going to be a detriment to you. That can only benefit you. Um, and it also can help develop um, uh, a healthy diet like a healthy daily dietary habit, as well as help with maintaining uh, a healthy body mass. Um, so that is Mediterranean diet. Um, there are several studies that include lots of different types of herbs and supplements. These I would, uh, my suggestion would be these are more, you, you need to always talk to your uh, doctor about any type of changes that you're making to your health protocols, including any type of herbs, any type of supplements, dietary changes, et cetera. Um, that is, always a number one thing uh, that you always check with your doctor to make sure that this is the right thing for you to do. But it's not always the right thing for every single person, um, especially if you are currently going through, uh, through treatment. Post-treatment, it's not as, as, you're not having as many um, restrictions or contraindications. So it's a little bit um, more loose, but uh, still, it is always a good practice to notify your healthcare practitioners with any type of changes. Um, so with that being said, um, there are that there is a herb called hawthorn or curtagus, 
vary um, that is specific to um, to your heart tissue and um, looking at um, looking at a higher dose around 1800 milligrams a week um, has been shown to um, help normalize ejection fractions and again um, with that antioxidant property of the Hawthorne berry, I think that that's what's helping with uh, with reducing the inflammation in your uh, in your heart and the blood vessels as well. Um, milk thistle, ginkgo, as and uh, turmeric um, or uh, curcumin are also three fairly well-known, widely known herbs. Um, milk thistle specifically for um, oftentimes liver support, uh, ginkgo for memory, and two more things called curcumin or curcuminoids for uh, their anti-inflammatory properties. Um, these herbs can also be, uh, have shown to be very beneficial for, um, for your heart as well, um, and for pre preventative as well as um, post-treatment. Uh, post um, so uh, for supplements, um, there are some supplements that have been shown um, in different types of cancer settings uh, to be of benefit for your heart. Um, melatonin being one of them. Uh, coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10, uh, ubiquinol, the, active, the bioavailable form. L-carnitine, especially in uh, children uh, that have um, uh, with a child that have gone through childhood cancers. Uh, taurine, arginine, and magnesium. And um, there is data out there. There are there is uh, um, lots of different um, double-blind placebo-controlled trials uh, utilizing um, either single uh, single types of supplements or combination specifically for um, cardio uh, prevention of um, and treatment of uh, cardiovascular injury. Um, and then there is also uh, a long history of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, PCM, uh, for cancer support um, for your heart, for overall health, and then as well as sleep and other types of um, general um, immune and lifestyle support uh, that you want to maintain uh, throughout your uh, treatment and then post treatment. Um, so there, there are quite a few things um, available out there um, that can help uh, greatly with heart support or cardiovascular support. Um, you just have to find out what is uh, what will be helpful for you, um, and what would be um, what would be uh, safe for you to uh, to intake. And again, um, like your health is individualized, so um, that is. Uh, I'll unmute myself now. <laughs> I love the fact that obviously, I mean, obviously, um, talking about yoga, meditation, mindfulness, um, and exercise, yoga improves the heart and health by increasing, um, and the breath by increasing the circulation and the blood flow. In addition, it, you know, by practicing yoga, uh, we can lower blood pressure and cholesterol and blood glucose levels, as well as the heart rate, which can all add up to the lower risk of hypertension and stroke and heart disease. So it's like, you know, any 30 minutes, that's 
what the American Cancer Society, you said it, and, and we know it um, in the past, says that's all you need per day. And 30 minutes in a day of 24 hours is nothing. And that's a brisk, if you don't like yoga or you don't like meditation, it's a brisk walk. It's a ride your bicycle. Um, if you have a Peloton, ride the Peloton. It's a Pilates. It's, you know, it, it might even be swimming. Swimming is so low impact. And especially after cancer treatment, when your bones and everything and it hurts and you just need to get up, swimming is so low impact and so easy because you're floating, you know? So 30 minutes a day, that's, that's huge. And, and that breath, that breath work is so important because as a trained yoga teacher, you know, it, it's, it's almost like putting logs on the fire. The more that you put logs on the fire, the more the fire burns, the more you inhale that breath and exhale that breath, the more the oxygen goes and flows through the body. Thank you. And another exercise that I think sometimes gets overlooked is resistance training. I, a really good resistance program has been particularly, <coughs> pardon me, studied with breast cancer and they found that um, diligent resistance exercise on a daily basis is really beneficial for recurrence and for strength afterwards and prevention of, um, of lymphedema. So it's very beneficial. And another um, health strategy is really focusing on sleep. <clears throat> I'm speaking to someone in the room too. <laughs> Um, good, regular, it has to be regular sleep and you have to work on it diligently, but we need more sleep than we think we do for health. And particularly if you're recovering from cancer, sleep is very important for inflammation and for well-being. So um, the sleep hygiene is very important as far as shutting down all electronics an hour or so before you go to sleep, cool room, um, you know, you, you can read if that helps you come down. The melatonin is helpful. Um, sipping chamomile tea is helpful. Not eating or taking medications immediately before you go to bed because those are things that can cause GI disturbances and keep you awake all night. Um, so it's just a, a program of coming down and focusing some nice yoga, breathing, um, aromatherapy is very helpful too for people that have a lot of difficulty with sleeping. So um, it's important to get more sleep than we think, at least eight hours, at least eight hours. And they're saying more than 10 hours is, is really good for you. I can't imagine getting 10 hours sleep, but um, it's really good for you if you can. And um, the, um, thinking, oh, I'm really busy today, so I'm going to catch up on my sleep tomorrow. Um, it doesn't work. You, ca you can't catch up on your sleep. <laughs> and it disrupts your sleep pattern more. So as in, you know, when you're a parent, it's like, you have to go to bed at 7.30 or 8 o'clock or whatever that magic hour is. And But we never say it to ourselves. So um, I, and I got to let people in on this, this inside joke that we're talking about. Before we started tonight, I said to Rosemary and Dr. Fung, I said, yeah, last night, for some reason, I couldn't sleep. I was working and watching my, I'm watching Dallas, the old <laughs> Dallas, so everyone laugh. Okay. Um, I love soaps. So what can I say? But anyways, <laughs> who shot JR? I know. <laughs> um, but I stayed up until 1.30 in the morning. And then I normally get up anywhere between 4.45 and 6 o'clock in the morning. I never set an alarm because my natural sleep pattern is just I'm in bed by 11, I'm up by that time. As soon as the light hits, I'm up. I, I, that's just ha normally how it is. Um, and, and today, I, I mean, I got up at six o'clock. So I really didn't have a lot of sleep, which wasn't good. And then I went and I did mental and physical work today out and about and then came home. I did take a nap, 
I took an hour nap. Um, so I made up for it, you know, and, and that was kind of my thought pattern last night. I'll catch up on it tomorrow. I have an hour of time for a nap before I have to do the rest of my stuff, you know, but not everyone can do that. Right. I definitely am, am paying for it today. So, yeah. Well, as far as naps, they recommend that you not an hour is, is okay, but not beyond an hour. Cause that's going to disrupt your sleep. And, uh, the term power napping, if you get yourself into a habit of just laying down for 20 minutes, um, it can be really beneficial and just a relaxation of the body and the mind. And, um, my girlfriend used to work with an attorney who, uh, was, up in Los Angeles and he was a defense attorney. So he had a very heavy workload and he would say, um, excuse me, I'm gonna take my nap now. And he would put his head on his desk. He was so trained, his head on his desk, fall sound asleep for 20 minutes and then automatically wake up and continue the conversation. Um, another one that used to do power naps every day was Madeleine Albright um, when she was the secretary of state. And that was something that just kept her going. And people who get in the habit of just, you, you may or may not fall asleep. I think it's a, it's something that grows if you are disciplined about doing it, but it's really helpful. And I know that, um, I do, um, 15 minute lay downs because I have lots of back issues and it's just amazing how just the change in relaxation and the change of position can really help and you wake up feeling so refreshed and, and, and um, able to carry on. So um, naps are, are really, they're so lovely. It's just such a treat to be able to just lay down or put your head on the desk for a few minutes when you just feel like you need it. Um, so one, of our, one of our Facebook friends, Paula says, I rest sometimes for 20 minutes, eyes closed and unplug, not even fall asleep, just unwind. Just seeing that those words that way, like soothes me. I'm just, I just want to be like, ah, you know? <laughs> it's like after a good yoga class or a good exercise, it's just so nice to just come and lay down. The restorative yoga where they encourage you to take a little nap afterwards. It's like, oh, how, this is so nice. <laughs> It's, I, I, think, I think for me, it's less of a like sleep, like less of a nap, more of like almost a break, like just a mindfulness break, like just shut down for like 15, 20 minutes. You don't have to feel like, I always feel like I'm pressured to fall asleep. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta fall asleep. And then I'm like, no, actually I don't. <laughs> you just like, just chill and, and just be quiet. Yeah, uh, for 20 minutes. And it's I think sort of desensitizing yourself from maybe patients and phone calls and electronics and tele and, and you know social media or whatever you're doing at the time. It's not that we want to do it, it's that we have to do it for our mental health and our well-being, right? We have to step away for a little bit because especially now that we're not in person all the time. We literally are, are looking at that computer screen or whatever, or we're on the phone. And that's a lot of oversensitizing ourselves and because we're not in person. We're not, you know, you have to almost have another layer of learning behind it, right? Am I right, Doc, or no? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's well, you're always constantly bombarded. Like the other point that I forgot to close with, but thank you for bringing it up, is we're always constantly bombarded with stuff. So one of the other things that are that that is key for heart protection is to stop watching the news, like all the time, you know, just shut it down. It's <laughs> too much. It's like so much stress. It's just constant, like, talk, 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 and it's, and you know, and it's not always the greatest thing, you know, and it hurts your heart. It, it really impacts your, your mood, your, uh, your emotions. Like some people like just really cannot, it, it, it stresses them out too much. And so 
Uh, one of the things that I say a lot to my patients, especially my older patients that are at home all the time and they have the news going on all the time, turn the TV off. Just make it silent. Turn some music on that you love, you know, instead, instead of that white noise of the TV, just turn music on instead. So you don't have to listen to the other stuff. Give yourself a break and that'll bring down, bring down your blood pressure. Well, a lot of times TV, uh, you know, we, uh, girlfriends and I would joke around, it's called the bad news diet, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of times, and I was talking to someone about this the other day, in fact, it's like you watch TV and and you don't want to be totally distanced from what's going on in the world, but you're right. I mean, if it's on constantly all the time, you can get depressed, I mean, they don't, you, you very rarely turn on the, t- the news media and there's a awesome story going on, right? Like something really cool, like, hey, this person, we went over there, you know? Yeah, or like, or you're on, on your phone, like doom scrolling, you know, you're like, oh, this is a horrible story. Oh, this is another horrible story. I'm like, stop. Doing that. <laughs> oh, and they they pop in when you're trying to focus on one thing. It's like you 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 get stuck on an email that you just have to open that's about something completely different. It just I I've been having to have quite a bit of self discipline in this area because I I cut down on Facebook. I I I just went into a vacuum for a few weeks, and it feels really really good. Um, but it's like sometimes we just work ourselves up and we're getting all worked up and we don't even realize that you know the cycle needs to be broken so sometimes that like in that 15 minutes break it's a break it's a break and sometimes there's these little visions that come up that's like ah, i'm not going to do this the rest of the day i'm going to after this i'm not going to eat that twinkie i'm not going to open up all those pop-ups I'm not you know I'm going to just take care of myself so and uh, another when you're talking about sleep and working yourself up one thing that happens with insomniacs is that they sit there and tell themselves you need to be asleep you got to go to sleep you got to go to sleep and then they twist and turn and you get so worked up that your bed like becomes your enemy you become you know it's like it becomes not a place of relaxation, it's working you up. So what you have to do in those situations is get up and go to a quiet place and just change. And whether it's you take just a nice little glass of water or you um, maybe read a book. Of, the best ones are really boring books at night and um, it can help you relax. But just something that helps you relax, that's away from your bed, that can help you just relax enough that you can go back to bed and hopefully get to sleep. Because it can be a horrible problem with insomnia. It's, it's a tough, tough situation. Do we have any other questions from uh, the Facebook? Or- yeah, we have a couple, let's see, uh, or a couple comments, actually. Angela says, when I was going through treatments, I napped with benefit. But now if I nap, I feel so fatigued and lethargic. Can you mm-hmm. explain? Too long of naps? Yeah. Because that can happen if it's too long of a nap. Um and then that, that can impact the quality of your sleep that night if it's too long. So maybe if it was a nap for 10 minutes or just a lay down for 10 minutes rather than a nap, it could be helpful. So another comment, I think this is more of a joke, but I'll still say it. When you see <laughs> older patients, what age is that? <laughs> Sonia. <laughs> And wait, no, what? No Twinkies, Ellie says. <laughs> yeah. um, when you're in a time machine, you wake up and they go, oh, Twinkies are good for you. <laughs> another comment, uh, Ellie, Eileen says, apologies if this was already talked about, but stress is such a big factor as well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
And that's one of the things uh, when we talked about doing yoga or exercise um, and things to reduce overall inflammation, the, the number one, like the, the number one trigger of inflammation is stress. So anything that you can do to reduce stress in any way is going to be beneficial and will reduce inflammation. So we did talk about a few strategies. We talked about yoga. We talked about other types of exercise. Uh, we talked about taking the midday, you know, lay downs, you know. Um, and improving and, diet. And improving diet, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, looking at other, you know, other herbs and other supplements and other things that, and medications that can help. So don't discount any of those things as well. Uh, it, it all works together for benefit. The interesting thing is anything that's good for treating stress is also good for treating your heart. I mean, the, the, the crossovers and the benefits are, you know, and when you talk about exercise, it's like, it's good for circulation. It's good for mental health. It's good for cancer. It's good for digestion. It's good for, it's, there's nothing that it's not good for unless you're, you know, climbing my Everest. Sometimes I think that might not be the best exercise, but um, there's, it benefits everything. And if it could, if it were a pill, it would be the most sought after medication in the entire world. And we have it available to us if we just do it. Well, and I think that's a really important factor what you guys just said too. Like, I guess there's two points that I wanna, that I wanna state is one, getting comfortable. I, I used to say this all the time going through cancer. I was, I had to get comfortable with being okay to not be okay. And sometimes the stress, obviously the stress, um, daily activities, overweight, whatever it is, can lead up to unhealthy hearts, right? We know this, I know this in my mind, but sometimes there's also the stress of, oh my gosh, I've finished all this chemotherapy treatment. I still can't get the weight up. Now I'm getting more anxiety, more stress. What am I doing wrong? Am I doing too much? Am I overdoing it on my body too? I think that I can come to a point like that and then call my doctor and say, hey, is there anything that, can help relieve my anxiety because I want to get this under control. But also another thing that I think is really important that maybe is, is something we haven't really stated is calling a friend, right? Mm -hmm. Calling a friend and, and having a laugh session or a bitch session or whatever you want to call it, you know? Um, forgive me if that offended anyone, but, but honestly, I mean, that you know, sometimes just being able to be with someone and talk about like, oh, I had a really crappy day or whatever it is. And, and a therapist, of course, a therapist is always very helpful, but just being with your girlfriends kind of helps relieve some of that stress and pressure because it's just life, right? Like we all have things in life that happen and we can help each other out that way too. So that should get us back to that almost that a little bit of a balance, mm -hmm. but if you continuously feel stressed or pressure or depression or whatever it is day in and day out, that's when maybe a little bit of medication or, or natural medication or a therapist would, would come into play too. Um, and the nature outdoors man, we've got beautiful mountains and hills and the Coachella Valley is just blooming with beauty right now. If we can take some time to breathe all that in to our hearts, right? Um, and sometimes we, we forget that. We take it for granted because it's there all the time, right? This is the most beautiful time of year in the desert. It's just probably one of the most beautiful places to be in the entire world right now. The light is gorgeous. The temperature in the air feels good. It's just an amazing time and we just need to really recognize it um, and feel lucky that we're, that we're here knowing that summer's coming. But you know, right now it's just gorgeous. <laughs> and I think there's one, there's one more thing helps us emotionally and physically. And I think he's trying to tell you right now, 
but our pets, our pets, they just, they were in seclusion. They're back with him in the office and they just let them out. And they're both like going crazy. But our, our pets naturally notice and feel our emotions and what we're doing. So we have to take them out for walks. Look at that baby. Oh. Right? But how can you not, like, how can you not as a human look at this little love bug right now and be like, oh, give me him. Or like, how can you not feel like you're holding him right now? I mean, they un unconditionally love you and make you happy, which again, lowers your serotonin to make you happy, which is good for your heart, right? It all works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's 10 months old, weighs 28 pounds <laughs> and is kind of a handful. <laughs> Oh, but he's such a love. He's oh, such a love. He's you should tell cool. everybody what his cute name is. This is Eddie. Eddie. It's Eddie. And his his friend is Buster. So it's kind of like they're two tough guys from the Bronx, Eddie and Buster. Um, but um, this guy was a street dog in Tijuana. And we were able to rescue him through the Humane Society. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and he likes to watch TV. <laughs> So he's, he's very happy when there's a Zoom on. Mm -hmm. okay. So cute. So cute. Get yeah. down. Okay. Anything that makes your heart happy, right? Right. That's included. And lots of exercise, too. <laughs> outside. Exercise outside. <laughs> I mean, I love hiking and hiking is like, you know, you get to see, you, you get to be in the mountains. You get to see, see the sky, see the blue skies, feel the sun because we actually have sun. <laughs> yeah, I know the, poor, the poor souls in Minnesota right now who are watching, I see, I see a couple of them on here. You know, there's a lot of sun sometimes there, but it's cold. But if you're a true Minnesotan, you're out there with a bike and you're snowshoeing and you're skiing or dog sledding or doing whatever else they do in the snow because I didn't do it, but, <laughs> but I know true Minnesotans, they ice fish too, I guess. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, the old have both laughing at me right now. Hi guys. <laughs> Well, from being from the Pacific Northwest, the reason why I'm not living there right now <laughs> is because I like I need the sun and the sun makes me happy and it like lowers my blood pressure. <laughs> Paula, Paula, Paula wants to remind everybody that heart healthy snow shoveling also happens. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know this past like few weeks, um, this has been crazy with the snow. So in, in all over the all over the country. Yeah. Texas especially and uh, even you know up uh, in Portland where where I'm from. Ice storms and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that um, I just read today here in the Coachella Valley. Um, and in case you're in Minnesota, it, Sun Country flies direct right in when, when it's safe for you to travel. But um, I just saw that the um, Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau actually came out with a pass for some of our local hiking um, establishments that are here. So um, I'll post that on our page so you guys can see it because it's a pretty cool like package with restaurants and all of this oh, nice. stuff that's in there. So yeah, so it's kind of like, a, I guess, the fast pass to hiking. I haven't, like, look, I saw it very briefly, but it looks really, really cool. And how cool is that to be able to give back to the Valley too and enjoy this time of year before it gets really hot? Yeah, I, I, I heard that the tram is actually open again too. Oh, really? Yeah. So Cheryl, you have to unmute yourself. The, the, the tram, you have to make appointments to go up because there's oh. social distancing yeah. and, and stuff. So, but, it, but it's got snow hiking. <laughs> um, 
It's so always a fun thing. Oh, I, know. I love going up there. Um, I know we're going to we are wrapping up our talk, listen, share tonight. And I know that uh, Shay has some things to share. Um, yeah, so one of the missions of Shades Warriors is to honor warriors, survivors, thrivers, and hometown heroes that are out there. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity because we do something what's called Love Bomb Reminders. And next month, we'll be honoring three new women. Um, so if for some reason you are watching this and you know someone who needs a Love Bomb Reminder, just a little bit of gentle, tender, loving care through health, wellness, and fitness, please go to our website. It's shayswarriors.org. Um, find Nominate a Warrior and go ahead and fill out the information. We keep all of that information private um, unless they are comfortable with us sharing it. But it is, um, we've been able to gift, I uh, believe it's 12 women now. And it's just been a really wonderful experience by our entire board and our community partners. So if you want to know more about that, go ahead and contact us, myself, any one of our board members, um, or just nominate a, a, a warrior because it's an amazing experience. And the next talk, listen and share, we'd like everybody to participate in because we're going to be having kind of a round table on caregiving, um, receiving care, uh, giving care, uh -huh. what it's like um, on your family and on yourself. So hope to get some nice rich conversation and insight for everybody. And invite, invite your friends and family. I mean, that, I'm assuming we'll probably want to find out about, you know, as a caregiver, how do we, how do we help caregivers who help, you know, people going through the process as well? Like what are gifts we give them? How, what do we talk to them? How do we say things to them? Stuff like that. So it'll be a really good conversation. I'm super it's excited. A good conversation. So get some. And that's going to be on the 10th of March. 10th of March. RSVP soon. Yeah. Okay. And I think it'll be nice too to um, incorporate partners in caregiving. Um, so it, that'll be uh, hopefully everybody can can attend that. Yes. Been thinking about you, Cheryl. Thank you. I feel it. Good. It's been a, it's been a good week so far. Good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's been an awesome, another awesome evening. I want to thank Dr. Fung and Rosemary for all the amazing, incredible research and education you give our entire community and especially Shay's Warriors. Um, I guess from my heart to yours, namaste. <laughs> namaste, everyone. Namaste. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great Bye -bye. rest of the week. Good night. Good night.